Hello beautiful makers, welcome to episode 55 of Stitching the High Notes, a video podcast and YouTube channel about knitting, cross-stitching, music, the arts, and all things crafty. My name is Joanna and I'm coming to you from the San Francisco Bay Area where I am a local opera singer and arts fundraiser. You can see what I'm up to on the social medias as Opera Joe, most notably on Instagram and Ravelry. And on Ravelry, there is a Stitching the High Notes group where we have make-alongs, ask me anything, thread, giveaways, all kinds of stuff, so check that out. Hello, how are you doing? I hope that your weeks have gone well and that you've gotten lots of making done. I have lots to share with you today. So without further ado, let's get started. So as is tradition, we start each podcast with tea time, which I am now totally putting in quotes (laughs) because I can't remember the last time I actually had tea. Today, it's a lovely summer day here. It's San Francisco, we're very lucky, we're, and we're getting our kind of typical summer for the first time in a while where it's very cold and foggy, um, it burns off during the day and then it, the fog rolls in again, and I live closer to the bay again, so um, it's been a nice like little foggy morning, um, but it does burn off especially where I live now, and so it gets up into the 90s, I don't know about today, but All of that's to say, I've been drinking so much sparkling water, it's not even funny. I've discovered this new brand called Spindrift. I don't know if you've heard about it. And it has real fruit juice. I'm desperately trying to hide my nails, by the way. They still have not been done since the last episode, guys. I'm just trying to let it grow out because they're a gel manicure. So, little side note, blanket apology (laughs) in advance. Anyway, I'm drinking this yumminess, which is blackberry, and it's just great. It has carbonated water, blackberry juice, fresh lemon juice, and blackberry puree, and it's the puree that gives a little bit of body to it, which is different than La Croix, which has, or La Croix, however you want to say it, but um, which is just straight up sparkling water with like flavoring. Um, But yeah, I love it. I love this. So grab your beverage of choice and let's get started. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Oh, so refreshing. So finished makes. Oh, (laughs) ta-da! So I finished my mom's socks. I've been making socks for my mom just because love to do it and these are the Mrs. Tittlemouse vanilla socks is what I've been calling them they're still a little damp so the color is a little bit brighter than this or paler they're not not by too much though they're they're drying pretty fast and yes I blocked socks you guys who am I what is happening Thank you all so much for your suggestions in the last episode because I have had a block on blocking, which is what I titled it. And um, yeah, I'm turning it around and I'm going to start steam blocking some things, but also wet blocking with some lovely soap, which I have to share with you. So I love these. These are done toe up uh, using the Sockmetician's Toe Ups pattern which has more of a traditional heel construction. There's a contrasting heel in this blue colorway. So this is yarn by Family Tree Yarns. Oh my gosh, I had said that totally wrong. I love Family Tree Yarns. But this is by Diane of Elm Tree Yarns. Oh, I love it. She has beautiful colorways that are inspired by Beatrix Potter. And this is a colorway that she dyed up for a giveaway, and then I kept one, uh, for the Beatrix Potter along that we had last year, which I hope to do again next year. Beautiful, and they're inspired by Mrs. Tittlemouse, the character. And I love them. 
I, they're still, even after blocking, which I didn't soak them for too long, um, it's still showing this kind of line right here, but I think it'll be okay. With wearing, it'll go away. I used circular needles. I did Magic Loop 2.25 millimeter. And I'm still getting a little bit of a little hole here, so I need to kind of work on my technique when I'm doing the heel. However, I think this one is fine. I think this is the good sock. <laughs> I think this is a sock that I was having all of that trouble with I talked about last time because I was working on it right after the crazy season had just finished, the performing season in June. And I just, I've learned my lesson that at least two weeks after the season closes, I need to just do vanilla knitting, like stockinette, no heel construction, nothing. So this took about two times to do. <laughs> no, just kidding. It took like seven times to do. But now they are done and blocked and they smell so good. So I was sent a lovely package um, from Caitlin of Woolen and Company. She has specialty soaps for wool wash and also hand balms. And she sent a goodie for you all as well. But let me show you what she sent because, oh my gosh. I, so I made this with the mango peach made it. I soaked it with the mango peach woolen bar, which I put back in the package here. But you can kind of see, oh, so good. And um, she gave me this lovely note, which I'm going to read to you so you can hear more about her company, which is so amazing. Oh. So she says, hi, Joanna. Hi, Caitlin. And she says uh, she included in the package wool wash bars. So I showed you the mango peach one, limited edition uh, seasonal scents. So there's a mango peach cherry blossom. So there's this one. Oh, it smells so good. And then there is watermelon, which is this one. Oh, it smells so good. And they're made of olive and coconut oil, uh, which provide a gentle yet effective cleansing, while our triple butter blend of avocado, mango, and shea deeply moisturize and rehydrate your wool garments. Last but most certainly not least, rich lanolin restores the integrity of the fiber while increasing the moisture wicking, wicking and odor eliminating properties of the wool. I love it because and it still smells a little wooly because they're still a little wet, but I love that you don't lose the scent of the wool because I like the smell of the wool. I'm smelling so. Um, and it, that the scent is subtle. It's not overpowering like some wool washes can be. And I'm pretty sensitive to scents. I don't have a lot of scent. I mainly have like beeswax, candles, and things like that. But that's why I was interested in trying out her products because um, I've been on the hunt for something like this where it's made with all natural ingredients and a lot are out there. But um, yeah, so that you don't get that chemically smell to it. Um, because otherwise I've used wool washes that have no scent and that's how my laundry detergent is as well. So I use mom's socks since they're going to her as an experiment because <laughs> she's not as, um, not as sensitive to scents as I am, but I think I'm going to use some of these for my larger garments, which as you know, I have many that need to be blocked or reblocked. So in the, in the sock is the wool rather is really soft. It was soft to begin with, um, but it is, it is super soft. This is a base that is a nylon BFL blend. So, um, you know, it's not rustic by any means, but it definitely is tougher than a superwash merino. And this now feels super soft to it. And it's plumped up the yarn beautifully. And 
yeah, so I highly, highly recommend these wool washes. And she's generously provided one for what I do. So I'm gonna do this as a separate giveaway in the Ravelry thread. You'll need to be a member of the Ravelry group. And um, I'll have all of the details in there and the prompt and everything. So thank you, Caitlin. She also sent um, for me to try out, which I've already tried out, a couple of muscle bombs and body bombs. And these are for me. <laughs> and this one is, um, so she, Caitlin and Woolen and Company is up in Seattle. And this is a muscle bomb that's called Warmth and it's anti-inflammatory, which is great for me because I have a lot of inflammatory issues, if you will. And I tried this the other day. Oh, so good. It smells so good. You've got this. And it, there's her tin. And she writes that, um, she has never met a maker who doesn't struggle with some form of dry skin or sore muscles, whether it be a sore neck from looking over a cable chart for hours on end or aching hands from a marathon knitting stitching session. True that. We all need a little TLC for our most prized possessions. Our hands. True. Our anti-inflammatory muscle balm come bombs combine a powerful set of herbs with the rich moisture of mango butter and lanolin. Warmth is infused with chili de arbol, I'm totally saying that wrong, sorry, and clove oil to create a warming sensation on the skin. I love to keep a tin in my project bag in case I need a little relief to my hands, wrists, arms, or neck. This has come in handy. I tried this the other day because my muscles have been quite sore lately, and I'll show you here with my project in a moment, but I'm using size 10, US 10 needles on a project, and I have pretty small hands, so it's been a stretch to work on this project. So this comes at a very timely, this is very timely, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so that is wonderful, and then there is this her herbal body balm, which is lavender, chamomile, and rose. And it smells divine. Oh, I love lavender. It's so soothing. Which is why it's called Soothe. Well done. So, <laughs> this is a blend of, as I said, lavender, chamomile, rose, and calendula, I believe is how you say it all infused with rich mango butter and lanolin, uh, creates the perfect salve for deep and long-lasting moisture. While this salve does not have the anti-inflammatory inflammatory characteristics of the warmth, I absolutely love the amount of hydration it provides. So this is great. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna keep this at my desk at work because I get super dry in the office with the AC on all day, even in the winter. Great. Oh, it has cedar wood. Love it. Almond oil, patchouli. <laughs> I laugh because when I lived in Berkeley, my sister, every time I would come home, she'd be like, You smell like patchouli. You smell like Berkeley. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so she, as I said, she's included, generously included this full-size wool wash with saffron and honey. Uh, I'll have the details in the Ravelry group for the giveaway. And it has uh, coconut oils of coconut, olive, lanolin, castor, avocado butter, mango butter, shea butter, uh, fragrance, mica oxide colorants. So it's pretty darn all natural. And she has included a coupon for all of you all. So it is for 15% off. And you can use the coupon code HIGHNOTES15. And it is good until August 25th. So thank you so much, Caitlin. So generous. I did not, I just picked up this package yesterday because I just finally was able to go down to my post office box. So after having that episode about blocking on block, a block on blocking and everything, it's a very timely package. <laughs> and thank you for sending it and for the giveaway and the coupon.
So on to the next segment, which is makes in progress. And I've done quite a bit on this project and I realized how much when I looked at my progress keeper. So let me put these guys back up and I will grab it. I have made great progress on my gully tank, which is by Leia Thebolt. And this is for my friend Ashley Renee, this tank top, loosey goosey tank top for the summer. I've been trying, I've been pretty monogamous on this outside of just finishing in between spurts on this project. Um, so I can get it off to her before the summer officially ends. <laughs> and she still has some heat that she can wear this in, uh, in New York City. But I separated for the pieces not necessarily the arms, but for the pieces on Friday, Saturday, or Thursday or Friday. And I've made quite a bit of progress. So here, it's gonna be really awkward to show, but here is what I've done. So I've got one back piece pretty much done. You can kind of see that. So this will be one of the back pieces that goes up the back like this. And now I'm on the second back piece and just doing decreases and shaping. And then this front piece I'll pick up, it's on waist yarn right now, and then finish that up. And hopefully it won't take too long, but we shall see. But this is where I was at, I believe last time we're that progress keeper, so three weeks ago, that's I've done all of this since then. <laughs> I was like, oh, I haven't gotten very far, and then it was like <laughs> And part of it's because it's, you know, pretty thick yarn. I'm holding it double. I'm using Knit Picks Lindy Chain, which is a linen and cotton blend yarn in the honey colorway. And I'm holding it double so I can create kind of a worsted weight yarn and gauge. Oh, so pretty. And I love it. I might have to make myself one of these. I'm hoping, I was a little worried the other day because I was worried that it might be too heavy for what Ashley was looking for um, and kind of desiring. But, you know, it's gonna be cotton and linen, it'll soften up, it'll, uh, based on my linen garment that I made last year, it is not hot to wear at all. Um, so I'm hoping she'll be cool with it because she's gonna wear like a kind of a half top kind of bralette underneath it. So, um, and it's meant to be kind of open in the back. So I'm hoping Ashley will like it. If not, she will have, I think she'll like it. She'll like it. She's, I can hear her yelling at me at the screen. I will love it. Be quiet. <laughs> so, so I, yeah, I haven't really had any hiccups with this project, which is great. Knock on wood, meaning no like errors that I've had to fix. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's a very intuitive pattern. Um, I did have one moment where I was kind of wishing I had a pattern a la lovely um, Helen of Curious Handmade. I love how she just has every line, what you need to do and your stitch count for every line. Um, just because I was in a headspace where I was just wanting that, not having to kind of, you know how most other patterns are where they say, you know, you do this and then you repeat the last two rows X amount of times based on what pattern size you're doing. It just felt like I just was tired of having to figure out the pattern basically. <laughs> but then my friends who I was gri griping to, they were like, that's how all patterns are, like get over it. And I was like, okay, we'll get over it. So anyway, I'm loving it. I'm realizing that this is the second time I've knit a garment in a similar colorway and for other people. And I think I might need to do one for myself. I don't know. 
what do you guys think? I don't know about this color on me, but might as well. Um, but yeah, I made a, I can't remember the pattern name. I'll put it down here, but I made a um, kind of sleeveless sweater cardigan for my sister many moons ago. It was one of my, I think it was like my first adult kind of garment that I had made, um, which was great. And it was in this similar colorway. So that is my big make in progress for knitting. That's kind of all I've worked on. Um, I have some things in the queue that I want to do. Of course, after I finish this, I'm kind of eagerly wanting to finish this up too so I can get back to my summer dreams uh, pullover for the summer make along, um, which is wrapping up at the end of this month. Um, that is a pattern by Marcella Chang uh, with Legacy Fiber Arts yarn, so I'll get back to that soon. I'm just now to the yoke and the short sleeves, so it shouldn't take too much longer once I get cracking on it. Um, but the summer make along is going along, along <laughs> really well. Every the finished make thread, I'll put a link down below, is beautiful. Your makes, everyone, are just so inspiring and so wonderful. Sewing is a big part of this make along this year. I sadly have not gotten to a lot of sewing yet, but I will talk about why later on. Um, and uh, it just it's great so take a look in there for inspiration the chatter threads still blowing up and we're chattering along in there and it's just been a great make along this summer and I hope it really does become an annual tradition so uh, yeah other stuff in the queue are sweet bee socks for mom because I always have to have a pair of socks for mom on the needles and she picked out her yarn yesterday. We went shopping on FaceTime. And she's going with yet another Elm Tree Yarns stash. Oh, I love this. So this is the Mrs. Tiggy Winkle colorway on a Stellina base. Oh, it's so pretty. So this will be the Sweet Bee Socks by jewels of so sweet violet and i'll probably cast these on when i'm done with the gully and i've done a few rows on the summer dreams so i can concentrate on that a little bit and then i've discovered recently i have a, a billion other things in the queue but the other thing that i'm actually going to cast on either today or tomorrow is something that i need in my car because I have an electric car now and car charging is a weekly, if not every other day occurrence. And I am not always with my knitting because sometimes I do it when I go to the grocery store or whenever. I need to keep socks in my glove compartment. <laughs> I need a car charging project at all times. So I'm just gonna do good old vanilla socks um, I might do a cowl. I actually haven't decided, but I, it's going to be something super easy that I can just grab. Don't really need to know where I'm at or necessarily follow a pattern. And I grabbed this just when I was looking at yarn with my mom the other day. I was like, the time has come for me to knit with this yarn. This is vintage stash as i like to say this i think is my first skein of indie dyed yarn and this is so i got this three or four years ago i think spun right round one of my favorite yarn dyers and i picked this up when I first started watching podcasts, my favorite one was Junk Yarn with Kemper, Kemper Ray. And um, I think she was talking about this yarn and that's when I was like, there's indie dyed yarn. What? Oh, they look like that when they're knit up. Oh my gosh, to Etsy I go. <laughs> and so I picked this up. Uh, this is the Shock Star colorway. Uh, Superwash sock 80-20, so 20% nylon, 80% merino. Just good old neon speckled goodness. I love the high twist yarn. I think that's how you could call it. It's two ply, I think. I 
know if it says it on here. So this is gonna be my car charge knitting. Yay! This will be a great way to, oh, that's so pretty. This will be a great way to stash bust as well, just to have something on the go in there too. So super excited for that to finally be knitting with my vintage stash stuff. What's oh, so soft too? So that brings us to cross stitching. So cross stitch corner, I've done a bit of cross stitching. Let me grab it here, pardon me, as I'm off camera. I um, mainly have done just two projects. And the first is my fun little Satsuma Street uh, Peace on Earth banner. So this is what it looks like by Jody Rice. And these are done on perforated paper. I did, I finished up, I can't remember what I showed last time, but I think I basically had finished up the C right before the last podcast. So here's the P, the E, the A, the C, and then I started the E, and then I, realized the other day that I did this last part of the middle section, the darker kind of green. I'd done it in the wrong color and it was super subtle. You could hardly tell, but it was gonna bug me and it was a quick fix. So I had in the morning, I just went ahead and fixed it. I took out um, the bottom, bottom middle stitches and then I, um, fix that and then finish the rest of the piece. So yeah, I had it upside down. So I, um, or no, I didn't anyway. <laughs> so this is what I've done on this project. Um, that reminds me, I've been doing like little morning videos. I just did it on a whim last week, uh, of my quiet time in the morning before I head into the city and kind of have to deal with the city energy, which is a real thing. Um, I really try to take time to just, just, you know, for however many minutes do some making in the morning, just listen to music or meditation. But I decided that, you know, I need to put some good vibes into the world. And, um, and so I videotaped it, of course. <laughs> and edit it together. I've been using this new program called Adobe Spark. And so this was their Spark video program. And yeah, it was just fun. I, I shared it as a post every day on Instagram and then put them on IGTV. So I'm doing kind of IGTV on there. And I think I'll keep them going, if not daily, at least a couple of times a week. Let me know what you think if you checked them out. Um, yeah, so I just thought I was send out some good vibes there. The other, I'll put this together later. The other cross stitching project that I've been working on, I did put a little bit of a dent in it, and it is my frosted pumpkin stitchery, and it is the Will You Be My Neighbor. Let me get out the pattern here. Not lose all my floss. There you go. Isn't that cute? So this is going to hang up in my little craft nook, which is bustling right now. We'll worry about that later. And I did all of this. So I've done... Oh, my needle's there. <laughs> I did basically, I think, all of this since the last episode, if I'm not mistaken. So not a ton, but I made quite a bit of a dent. Not too bad for morning knitting. That's mainly when I've been cross-stitching lately uh, because I've been coming home in the evening and either knitting or working on a few other things. So that is my cross-stitching. And then I wanted to show you real quick something that my mom gave me the other weekend when I was home. I've been spending a lot of weekends up at my mom's house and spending time with my sister and my nephew and my mom, um, which has been fantastic because I am not able to get up there very, not too often, even though they're only an hour away um, when I'm working and, and singing a lot. So, um, 
so it's been great the last like five weekends I think I was up there um at least one or two of the days so mom gave me she was she's been going through her stuff and you know cleaning out and purging and stuff and she found these cross stitch books that were hers and I think they were all yours mom I can't remember but um they're just so great so one is when I learned how to cross stitch and I think many of us was the precious moments <laughs> so she gave me this book I don't know if I'll ever make anything maybe for like a nursery or something but it's got like all of those Precious moments, big part of my life, big part of my family. My grandparents lived pretty close to, um, what's the name of the place? I totally forgot. Beloit? I'm going to put it down here. Y'all are screaming at me. But, <laughs> but there's the Precious Moments Chapel and kind of theme park there. And so we would, whenever we would go visit my grandparents, um, we would go to... The Precious Moments theme park. I there's like some photo out there. I doubt I could find it in time for this podcast, but maybe in the future I'll share it. It's kind of embarrassing, but it's of me hugging somebody dressed in a large Precious Moments, <laughs> like Mickey Mouse style. So little nostalgia there, and then she gave me this the John the Irving Munson alphabet book. So here you go. This collection of alphabets, numbers, and borders, complete instructions for creating samplers and quotable quotes. So this is awesome. Just kind of a good standard kind of dictionary of stitches, if you will. And yeah, this is great. Just looking real quick in here. It's got tons of information. It's great. And then the PS de resistance. I totally squeed when I saw this. Get ready, guys. Peter Rabbit's ABCs. Beatrix Potter! <laughs> I will totally be making stuff out of this for sure. And it's pretty funny because this is my sister's name is Caroline. So maybe I'll make Caroline a thing. <laughs> oh, I love this so much. So I cherish these. Thank you, Mom, for passing them down to me. So good. Because she used this to make um, stuff that used to be up in my nursery, which eventually I'll rehang up um, in my little crafty nook. I think I... Do I have it? Let me go try to find out. Hold on. BRB. Found it. So this was up in my nursery when I was a kid. And I... I Took it back because I want to frame it and hang it up in my nook. Very cool. So there you go. So on to the next segment. I let me look at my little show notes here. So we have some giveaway winners and some new giveaways. So enjoy this little interlude and uh, winners. Just reach out to me on Ravelry and I'll get your patterns to you. Thank you to all of the lovely makers and designers for donating these patterns for all of you. That brings us to backstage knitting. Um, I have had a full couple of weeks, fun stuff, going up to see mom and my sister and hang out with my nephew, Nicholas, which I will say his name. I got the go ahead to say his name because, <laughs> you know, you want to respect parents' um, wishes for privacy. But I, my sister came down yesterday because um, she was going down to a shower, um, a baby shower for one of her friends. And it was so funny. She came in and she goes, I'm wearing makeup. Let's podcast. Because <laughs> she and I have wanted to film something, just chit-chatting, talking about making, about her things that she makes as a teacher for her second grade 
now she's doing second and third grade kind of mashup class um things she makes for her class or as she likes to say asks others to make for her class <laughs> Uh, so we shot a little episode yesterday, which I'm going to plop here up on the YouTube channel. Um, if you would be interested to see two sisters laughing their asses off <laughs> and talking about random stuff. It's somewhat making related. I tried to keep that thread going, but it's pretty fun. But um, So that's been great to hang out with her a bunch and hang out with mom. Mom's been helping me a bunch with um, donating things for my making, things for my shop, which it was, which is opening in a few weeks, I think at the end of August or the beginning of September. So I'll keep you updated on that. I've been making bags. I'm making cross-stitch bags and um, uh, knitting bags and I'm gonna have like some jewelry I'm trying out like earrings all kind of making and knitting related of course um, but it's a lot of work to fun work to set up uh, on the back end all of the business and marketing and branding and getting my domain transferred over to Shopify and all that stuff so I can't wait to share more with you um, but I won't talk about it too much more because I just have been constantly teasing and I know that would get on my nerves if <laughs> I saw somebody doing that. So I hope to have something to show you all very soon. Um, and yeah, what else? Oh, I went to go see Star Wars on Friday with my friend Ashley and her husband Charlie or Charles. I don't know if I should call you Charlie or Charles. Charlie. <laughs> But we went to go see the symphony, uh, the San Francisco symphony has been doing a lot of film series. They've really um, pumped up that program, so to speak. And so they've been doing the original trilogy of Star Wars and playing the music live. It's such, oh, I love it. I love it. There's two camps who are like, don't even get me started. <laughs> But I love having the symphony play live music to films because frankly, I fall in love with classical music because of John Williams and soundtracks, you know? And then that's what sparked me to look into the great masters and um, to start learning how to play cello because I played cello for years. That was my first instrument. And you know, it all kind of stemmed from great soundtracks and those composers like John Williams was head of the Boston Symphony for years and they pull from other composers some people say steel but I say they were inspired by <laughs> like Mahler and all that stuff so it was a treat and then just to be around my fellow nerds especially after not going to comic-con this year was a treat I wimped out and didn't wear my pilot's costume but I did wear a little Naboo um, inspired cardigan that I got a couple of years ago but Ashley and Charlie represented and they dressed in their outfits that he, they had worn for Force Awakens um, as Padme and Anakin. They're adorable. They're just stinking adorable. So I was like taking pictures for people. <laughs> it was so much fun. So, and they were fun. They were like, we're here to see our grandkids, you know, or our kids. And then they were, they're, yeah, so anyway. So... Yeah, so it, it's been a great couple of weeks. I'm so glad to be back with you all and sharing. I, I'm going to say it here. I'm going to go back to a weekly podcast uh, just because then, I don't know, I feel like I can be more involved in the community. I've been feeling that tug and need to do that, which means these will be a little bit simpler. They'll be shorter, um, although famous last words, here I am chattering on, but that's why we watch these, is also to get inspiration for makes, but also to visit with each other while we're knitting and stuff, so at least that's why I do it, but yeah, I'm gonna do weekly, um, yeah, I just, I, I just feel the need for it, so stay tuned to this channel, you're gonna be seeing a lot more of me, <laughs> for better or worse. Um, and I, yeah, I will check in with you guys soon and I hope you are doing well. I hope your makes are going well and I will see you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye.